we make the strings. What's up guys? Welcome to part three of the 600 horsepower turbo K series all wheel drive Lambo killer Honda Civic. I think that's what this thing is now. So, uh, so as you guys seen in the last video of messing with this thing, we did bolt on these, uh, these rear control arms and we bolted in the diff. Uh, we were missing one little piece from our kit, which happened to be this little plate right here. So, uh, so now comes in, I guess this is the, the non bolt in procedure uh, of the bolt in all wheel drive kit. Uh, which isn't too big of a deal and because uh, it, it pretty much this bolts in there and then you basically just tack weld this tack it in there tack these things get everything to fit nice pull it out weld it and then stick it back up in the car and actually weld it again so in the last video i went ahead and uh, and massaged this out really well and one of the issues that we're running into now is once we stick this little plate up in there there's not enough room to actually stick the bolt to actually bolt it to the top of the diff. So I went ahead and I made a quick little uh, little punch mark which is around the center of that. So I'm going to go ahead and drill those down from the top, kind of take like a, one of them Harbor Freight acorn bits and kind of hog it out so it's big enough for me to stick a socket and a bolt down here so that way I can actually bolt that. Uh, we're going to go ahead, there is a little bit of play right here for us to go up and down. So I'm going to make sure that this is kind of nice and level and everything where it needs to be where the drive shaft goes in. And then uh, we're pretty much just going to clean off these little spots right here. You can see there's some uh, some seam sealer right there. There's the, the, the fuel filler hose that we're going to have to move. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and drill them holes. That way I could actually get this top plate bolted on right here and then do that. So one of the other things is I uh, went ahead and dropped off the drive shaft. The drive shaft guys are a couple days out. So, uh, so we're kind of waiting for that to get back in. But uh, Justin, when he sent this plate out, he went ahead and sent these out as well. These are basically where the viscous coupler mounts. It goes right there. So obviously you need to mount this solid in the car. And uh, I'm kind of not sure whether the, the short end of the drive shaft goes towards the diff or if it actually goes towards the front. So this little spot right here, you can see this, this basically has a little bit of play in and out. And uh, so I was assuming that, that sh this side should probably go to the engine since uh, typically engines aren't really solid mounted that when you, you know, a Honda, it's gonna like torque kind of forward and backward. So I think that's where that goes, but uh, obviously there's a little bit of play on this side, so we'll be able to go in and out. So I'm gonna get the rear short piece. I'm gonna wait till we get the rear drive shaft in to actually get that bolted and, uh, and weld it in the car. But I'm gonna go ahead, drill some holes and uh, start mounting this thing, start getting ready to weld at least. So we have the plate bolted to the top. I went ahead and made the holes a lot bigger up there. You can see all the daylight come through. And I uh, went ahead through a C-clamp around it, basically holding this bar in place. You can see Ty's got a little bit of pressure holding this one. And uh, so yeah, this is basically what's going on right there. And we'll push up the diff just a little bit when, uh, when we actually go to weld it. So that bottom thing should be right at the bottom of the plate, which is perfectly fine. You can see I kind of outlined a little etch so I could go ahead and actually uh, kind of clean all that off so it's bare metal. So plan is, 
is we'll go ahead, clean this stuff off up here, get it so it's like a nice weldable surface. I'll go ahead and tack this in a couple spots. You can see there's a little notch back there on the back side. Tack that in a couple places, tack these plates on, then we'll actually unbolt it, remove it from the car, and then fully weld it. So weld it all the way around the plates, weld it on this top piece, and then we'll actually stick it back up in the car with this guy right there, and then we'll go ahead and weld that fully into the car. So So I got it all uh, all tacked up, and so I'm gonna go ahead and just weld it on the outside of the car. Uh, when you're ever doing anything like this overhead, I always wear like a jacket, and then on top I have uh, I look like a, it's like a train conductor freaking hat, and uh, I always have that on so you don't burn your freaking hair because man that that's no fun. And then always good welding gloves if you're if you're doing this. So hopefully hopefully you have a buddy that knows how to weld, or uh, hopefully you have a welder if uh, if you're planning on doing this. But um, yeah, I'm uh, see if I could stack some some MIG dimes. So I got this thing all welded up. This thing didn't turn out too bad. This right here, that's my favorite weld out of the whole bunch. I wish they would have all turned out like this. So all these other ones were practice. Just leading up to that one. That was pretty much one of the final welds right there. Wish it would focus on there. Oh yeah, look at that, pretty. So, but yeah, all the other ones don't look, uh, don't look too bad. I just threw a couple little tacks right there on the inside. And then I'm basically throwing a little bit of uh, masking tape right there so that I don't get this metal. I'm gonna go ahead and paint this top piece since I'm not really gonna have great access to this when we actually fully, fully get it in the car. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, throw a quick little coat of paint on that. And then probably a little bit under here as well, just in that area where we uh, hammered all that stuff, so. All right guys, so just got the whole back of this thing all welded in. Looking pretty decent. I mean, this thing, it's uh, it's not going anywhere. So I'm um, pretty stoked about that. Need to get a little bit more paint. I ran out of, uh, ran out of paint for that stuff. Um, I think the plan is, is I'm gonna clean the whole bottom of this and actually remove the diff and everything probably tomorrow and actually make the stuff all nice and black and shiny and pretty again, or like satin black, basically like that so that it looks all nice back here and this isn't just a bunch of brand new stuff on an ugly looking car. And, uh, and we also have uh, a surprise tomorrow. So we're gonna play with the, I'm gonna go home and get a baseball bat and we're gonna play with the pinatas with these, mm -hmm. with these brake lines right here. So I'm gonna see you guys tomorrow. I was wondering why the box is so big. Me too. It's just a 
little intake manifold. So if you guys aren't following me on freaking Instagram, you need to be following me on Instagram because I'm almost at 50,000 and I'm kind of sad that my videos get 50,000 views, but I don't have 50,000 freaking followers on the Instagram. But a uh, subscriber, um, he sent this intake manifold and he paid UPS store to package this thing. And literally you could have packaged like something super, super delicate in here. Like look at that, like this thing was just like this. Just like that. That's a lot of packing materials. It is. Are you are you ready for this? Yeah. Like if you bought a new one in the box, I don't think they'd send it out that nice. So this right here is an RBC intake manifold and it's been uh, port matched right here to 70 mil for the throttle body. But uh, yeah, the guy who sent it, his name is Chaz Lee. And uh, you could tell by the packaging job on here, you, the UPS store really went above and beyond. So if you guys want to see how much it actually cost him to ship this thing, he made a video about it. Be sure to go check out his channel. I'll put the link in the description. His name is Chaz Lee. But uh, yeah, I really, really appreciate him sending this out. and. Uh, Obviously, this thing is going on the K24 all-wheel drive monster. So hopefully, this thing will I think she'll put us into the. It'll at least get us into the tens for now. That's the plan. Tens for now. Eights later. Sixes coming soon. Motion sickness before any of that. All right, guys. So we are back here today. I uh, got a little bit tired last night after welding in the whole uh, diff brace and everything for the top of it, but uh, we're back here today. I got the porta cool. It's like 90 some freaking degrees outside. Super hot, but I'm I'm spoiled with this thing over here. But uh, yeah, so we're gonna play uh, pinata. Act like these things are pinatas real quick. We're gonna pull these guys off, and we have some goodies over here. So in this box, we have some nice Willwood four piston brakes. So they're not the. It's not the big brake kit because I'm still planning on running slicks on the front of this thing. So I didn't do the, the upgraded rotor. Uh, so it's an upgraded rotor, it's drilled and slotted, but it's not uh, it's not the, the bigger rotor. It's not like the 13 inch rotor. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, install these. And uh, the nice thing about these things is that I'm getting rid of these factory brake lines, which everybody was, uh, was so upset about. And same thing for the rear. I'm not doing an upgraded kit in the rear. I did have these ones tied up with zip ties, but I do have some stainless braided lines coming for the rear as well. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and throw these on the front. In order to do this, this car is actually a, it's either an LX or something like that. It didn't have, doesn't have a sunroof and it didn't have the correct spindles. So uh, the guy who I bought the four door sleeper car from, he had another sedan sitting over there in his like little parts yard or whatever. And so I went ahead and went over there yesterday in like the 100 degree weather and pulled off these front spindles. So these are EX spindles, and I guess where the caliper bolts are over here is a little bit different. Um, basically, you need them in order to run this Willwood setup on the front, so that way it actually bolts on. So the other thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is actually install the axles. You can see I got the, the half shaft installed here yesterday. You need to tighten the bolts on there. But uh, yeah, so I have a set of insane shafts, 500 horsepower axles. Um, for the front, they're the swap axles. So if uh, if you guys are ever interested in doing a K swap on your car, basically the stock front axle size right here is like 32 millimeters that goes in there. And the RSX Type S is I believe 36 millimeters. So on the base model RSX, they're 32 millimeters. So if you want a, uh, a set of stock RSX axles, they'll actually work you have to have the ones off of base model. You can't use the ones off of a type S or whatever. So uh, I got the ones that use the stock axle things, but they're upgraded. So they should handle about 500 horse. So if my calculations are correct, if we're all wheel drive and I have, I have a set of their, uh, their rear axles coming for the rear too. So that, that way I don't actually have to cut and weld those as, as well. Um, Cause I, I didn't really want to do that anyhow. So there, I have a set of the rear axles coming as well. And those are 500 horsepower axles. So I think maybe that means that we could do a thousand horsepower all drive. So uh, this build is escalating kind of quickly and, uh, and I'm really stoked that you guys are so stoked to kind of follow along with the process. 
but I'm gonna go ahead and get these guys cleaned up and stick them on the car with axles and uh, then we're gonna go ahead and bolt on the brakes. All right guys, so you can see, got the Willwood disc and rotor all bolted on this guy. Went ahead and installed their uh, their line kit. So I, I ordered this line kit separate, it does not come with the kit. And then I did have to buy this separate little uh, little banjo type of thing. This is basically an M10, uh, or like a M, basically the, the metric 10 size banjo fitting to a 3AN. And that goes into their banjo bolt right here, which they provide this banjo bolt. So. Got the copper crush washers in there. You can see it goes 90 right here. Kind of goes up in there. I will get a rubber P clamp and actually tie this down properly. You can see it's kind of hanging down looped right there. Goes up into this thing and then it has the factory clip that actually clips into that, tighten all this stuff. And uh, we're pretty much good to go. So now the, the other test is gonna be if uh, this, the conic wheels actually fit without having to run a spacer. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw those on, throw one of them on real quick. So you can see it fits basically perfect right there. You have plenty of caliper clearance to fit with these uh, these conics. So that's a that's a pretty good look right there. So I'm I'm really freaking stoked. Again, shout out to Conig for uh, for hooking it up with these wheels on here. Uh, I am probably going to be getting another set of the 15 by nines with the slicks, so that way I could actually just run all four uh, bias ply radials on here. I think that'd be really cool. Go to the track and run some crazy passes. But for now, I think I'm gonna start out kind of playing around with it on the street tires and hopefully not break the transmission since it's basically uh, basically stock. So yeah, again, a huge shout out to Chris for sending out this RBC manifold. I already got it all cleaned up and kind of mocked up. Um, with a throttle body, I have to get a different adapter. This is a Skunk 2 billet throttle body. And uh, so yeah, I, uh, I'm not gonna do this other side right now. I just wanna get you guys a video up for the day. I, I know you guys are pretty anxious to kind of see where this thing is going. And uh, I've just been on the phone, on the email, um, on eBay, just buying all kinds of freaking parts for this thing. And uh, it's really cool. A lot of companies have actually kind of stepped up right at the last minute. And uh, and it's basically just kind of escalating a little bit further. So uh, I'm gonna be working with K-Tune. And uh, what I'm really excited about is I'm working with ECU Master. So as you guys know, in my black, silver, and red Supra, I have an ECU Master Black, and uh, so we're gonna be using the same ECU on this thing. We're gonna be using the stock harness, and we're basically gonna be cutting off the stock plugs and wiring it straight into the ECU, and they are gonna be doing a plug and play adapter eventually, but uh, that'll be a whole nother video, but I am really stoked about that. Gonna be going full standalone. Uh, Dietrich is sending out uh, fuel rail injectors, complete fuel system. I still need to do the fuel cell and stuff. That should be here on Friday. Um, basically everything. So I would really like to make it to Streetcar Takeover in Denver, which is uh, July 12th, which is kind of a really big push um, to see if we could actually get this thing together. But uh, like I said, K-Tuned, Dietrichworks, Garrett, um, ECU Master, 
and uh, you know a bunch of other cool stuff is uh, is kind of showing up for this thing. So uh, yeah, I really appreciate you guys uh, you guys watching, tuning in. If you guys are excited about this project, be sure to leave a thumbs up in the I guess hit the thumbs up button or uh, or leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think about this whole thing. And uh, if you guys like what I'm doing here with all these projects and stuff, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I uh, really, really appreciate you guys watching the videos and, uh, and sharing, telling your friends. And uh, we're coming after Rudnick. You, got, you guys got to go tell Rudnick he's got to step up his GTR game because this, this freaking uh, the Civic is, is coming after him pretty soon. So, uh, so, yeah, still waiting on turbo and stuff. But like I said, tons and tons of stuff to do this week. Um, just kind of ordered a, a mountain of parts today. And uh, we should be getting her going soon. So, again, appreciate you guys. Appreciate you guys watching, and uh, we'll see you guys later. Again, Hub City Performance for all this rear trailing arm stuff. It's amazing.